Hey guys, welcome to day one of teaching your child how to read. In this comprehensive course, I'm going to give you the skills, the knowledge, and tools so that you can effectively teach any child how to read. Now, the information that I'm providing you, yes, you can use this with children who have ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, etc. This information comes from a comprehensive study of over 100,000 high quality studies on how children learn to read. This is the course that I wish someone would have given me as a teacher before I walked into the classroom. So let's get started. You guys can go to the link in the description box and it has um, a printout where you can print notes because I think it's really important that you internalize this information so that when you go back to your child, it'll be really easy to teach them. Have you guys seen those those buildings, like they're kind of Romanesque buildings, like in DC, like the Capitol building? that have columns or pillars in the front of them. A lot of homes have them nowadays, but they're really just for show. But back in the day, those columns were actually a support structure for the building. And if even just one of those pillars were, were weak or got knocked down, the whole building could come down. That's what it's like when we're, when we're teaching a child how to read. So there are really five pillars that researchers have found children need to be taught in order to be strong readers. Okay, so they are phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and text comprehension. So these are the five things and over the next couple of weeks we're going to be learning about each one of these in detail. Today we're going to start with phonemic awareness. Now it's a big topic so it's going to take two or three videos. Today I'm going to tell you what phonemic awareness is and we're going to practice a little bit with it. And then tomorrow we're going to get into some activities that you can do with your child to improve their phonemic awareness. But what is phonemic awareness? Now in this course, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail and give you a lot of technical jargon, but there is some vocabulary that you need to know in order to understand this process. So when you hear the word phonemic, what do you hear? That phone, like, telephone or saxophone what do those things have in common they make sound it has to do with sound phonemic awareness is the ability for a child to write this down in your notes <laughs> they need to be able to notice think about and work with or manipulate sounds in individual words i'll put work with you can put manipulate That's in spoken words. So at this point, when we're talking about phonemic awareness, we're not talking about anything written down, any print. In fact, a child needs phonemic awareness skills before they can be taught phonics, okay? Notice, think about, and work with. Well, there's a fancy name for sounds, and we just call it a phoneme. Phoneme. A phoneme is that smallest unit of sound in a spoken word. So, for example, if we have the word cat, the word cat has three sounds or phonemes. K, A, T. Children need to know how to, number one, recognize that words are made up of these individual sounds. So we have to teach them, hey, the word cat, let's listen to how many sounds it's made up of. Well, why do kids need to know this? Whenever I'm working with my children and they're writing down a word um, and I see that they're having trouble, I ask them, hey, what's that word you're trying to write? And 99% of the time it's because they say the word wrong. Think about it. They don't know English. It's like if you were trying to learn a foreign language or if you didn't know English, and I was talking to you right now, you wouldn't know one word from the next, right? So you wouldn't know one sound from the next. So that's what we're trying to kind of teach children. I hope that was clear. And if you have any questions throughout this entire course, please make sure you do leave your questions in um, the comment section below and I will be sure to answer every single question that you have. All right, so we talked about how children need to be aware of how sounds work in words and understand that words are made up of these phonemes. So let's just do some examples. Um, 
of phonemes and I want you guys to try to see how many phonemes are in these different words and see if you can figure them out. Well first, let's just have some basic things like hat. How many phonemes? Okay, obviously three. At. So phonemic awareness would be the ability for a child to change the first sound in hat to p and know that it's p, all right? Or change that to a r sound and hear rat. Remember, this is all spoken. Nothing, they're not reading or writing down anything at this point or with phonemic awareness. They can be writing at, at the same time and we will do these kind of five pillars kind of all at once. But when we're, when we're talking about phonemic awareness, we are not showing this child um, the word and saying this is rat. We are first making sure they can hear the individual sounds that make up words. English has about 41 phonemes and you might see 44 or 45 and that doesn't have anything to do with us. It's just linguistic people. So let's take a look at the quiz. Your quiz says, how many phonemes are there in the following words? Van. That's pretty easy. O. O. One sound, one phoneme. The word a uh, or a, one phoneme. If. If. Two sounds, the i and the f. And by the way, when you see this slash, which you'll see a lot. This just means this is the sound the letter makes as opposed to the actual letter. And we have to distinguish that for kids. Kids have to know this letter is R, the sound is R. Okay? So that's all these two slashes mean. Next, check. Check. How many sounds in the word check? Let's see if I can trick you. Check. How many sounds? Did you get three? Because there are three sounds in the word check. See, three sounds, not three letters. The sounds would be ch, e, k at the end. Let's look at stop. Stop has four letters. How many sounds? Four. Up. I know it can be kind of hard, and here's something that helped me. Take a look in the mirror. There's a mirror right in front of me. If you take a look in the mirror and you say the word really slowly, stop. Look at how many times your mouth moves. When we're saying sounds, even our mouth slightly moving means that we're making a different sound. So, st. You, say, you might think like, oh, one sound, st. But no, what happens? That's two different sounds. So sometimes when kids struggle with that, I tell them either to look in the mirror really carefully, to slow down and say the word, stop. I have them kind of move their bodies with it. So every time you make a different sound, move your body. Stop. And you'll be able to see that there are four sounds. Let's look at the next two. School. How many sounds? Ooh, four sounds. Here's some tricky ones. Christmas. Practice that. How many did you get? Pause the video if you need to. Seven. Through. Through. How many sounds did you get? Three. That's right. That's a tough one, right? Ooh. Ooh. That's how I teach my kids. And scratch. Scratch. Five different sounds. So it takes some practice. And what I did is I just stayed in the mirror for a lot. And I looked really carefully on how my mouth was moving. Um, and then I taught it to the kids that way. Now it's going to be easy for them to do things like van 
But once they get to more difficult words like scratch or school, it may be harder. Um, and also, a lot of kids are going to want to, they're going to see the word in their head, or if you write it down, they're going to see it, and they're going to say, oh, you know, check. I, I don't know. I guess it has one, two, three, four, five, you know, five sounds, but that's not right. So what can kids do to show us that they have strong phonemic awareness, and how can we develop that? Well, take a look at your notes. It says, you know, the first thing that they can do is they can recognize certain words in a set begin with the same sound. So that be like bell, bike, boy. They all start with the b sound. They can isolate or say the first or last sound in a word. For example, dog. What's the last sound? G. Right. Or sit. What's the last sound? T. That's correct. And you might think, oh, this is like really easy. But for kids, it's really not, especially for younger children or for older children who are struggling go back and work on phonemic awareness with them. And if you want to be updated basically every day on some phonemic awareness exercises, make sure that you are following me on Instagram because practically every day I'm posting a video about phonemic awareness at the moment. Next is blending. And blending is a word that you've probably heard of. Blending simply means to take the individual sounds of a word and push them together. Oh, I didn't write it down. Blending. So if we have, what does this mean again? What do these two dashes mean again? The sound, right? So if I give kids these three sounds, mm, ah, p, blending means they need to be able to put those sounds together to make a word. Map. This is before they see the letters again, remember. So that's what blending is. Segmenting is the opposite. That's taking a word, map, and breaking it apart into the individual sounds. Mm, ah, p. Note again, kids need to have instruction in phonemic awareness in order to benefit from their phonics. So if you're strictly doing phonics, which is working with writing, Mm, that might be causing some harm. You, that may be why you're struggling. You need to back up and go to the basic building blocks of sound. So just summing it all up, phonemic awareness can help kids learn to read. Phonemic awareness helps kids learn how to spell. Phonemic awareness is most effective when the child knows the names of the letters. So you need to be teaching the letter names while you're teaching phonemic awareness. They don't need to know all of them, but it's quite helpful to say, all right, think about the word mat. Let's take away the t and put a n sound in there. Man, now let's write the word. Also, there are different types of phonemic awareness. I talked about blending and segmenting. We talked about isolating, taking out the first sound or the last sound. But guess what? Even though tomorrow we're going to learn a lot of activities, only teaching the children two or three phonemic awareness, I guess, skills at a time can really improve their reading, as opposed to trying to teach them everything about phonemic awareness. So we're in luck. All we need to do is consistently, five minutes a day, work on little skills like this. So I'm going to see you guys tomorrow, and we're going to talk more about phonemic awareness and some activities that we can do in order to help children gain stronger phonemic awareness. In the meantime, your task is to do your homework and to really understand, what is a phoneme? What is phonemic awareness? Can I, myself, identify the different phonemes in words? And if you go tonight and you're, you know, you're Googling how many phonemes in the word, you know, umbrella, and you don't get it exactly right, that's okay. Keep practicing, especially if you have a beginning reader, you're going to be learning right along with them. I hope this has been helpful. If you guys have any questions, please do leave them down below. It's going to really help me also inform what I'm going to do for the next lesson. Bye-bye.